Okay, time to get this 3950X installed and this big ski water block installed on this uh, Redian 5700XT Anniversary Edition. There's Storm Pro and we're putting it all on the Gigabyte Aorus Master. Okay, at the end of this video, I ran a bunch of tests. Um, for mark burn ins for 15 minutes then an hour and then a separate test with prime 95 and fur mark running for an hour uh, maxing out everything i could do what we found was there's a 33 to c to 35 c drop in temperatures after this big ski uh, 5700 xt card is installed um, I recommend you guys fast forward through the parts of the video that are boring to you, but some of you uh, guys who've never water cooled before will probably want to especially pay attention to the area where I'm installing the thermal pads on the Bixki 5700 XT water block. Um, we cover VRM, the memory, and there's five chips that uh, need little thermal pads on them. You do this, you're gonna see the same, uh, I can't guarantee it, but you should see the same 33C to 35C drop in temperatures on the 5700 XT. And then you can go crazy overclocking um, if you want to. <laughs> you know, I just want you guys to stick around. Uh, in the links below, there are there's an add-in for YouTube. If you don't have anything where you can fast forward through YouTube or anything, you can always use the mouse and go and jump ahead. Um, but I cover a lot of water cooling basics, uh, pipes and everything like that. So I'll see you at the end of the video. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Um, click the notification. There's links to my Twitter page. Please follow me. Please. Uh, Thanks. Talk to you in a bit. All right, I got some more water drained. So the first thing I'm gonna to try to do is there's a tube coming off the back of the radiator back here. I'm gonna, it's going into the reservoir right now. I'm gonna hook it. I'm gonna disconnect this and come straight down. And you can see down there, there's a connection to the other radiator. So I'm gonna come out of this radiator into this radiator down here. And right here on this side, I've got another connection. I'm going to have to do a straight 90 up and come back into the reservoir with that. So that's what I'll be doing next and then we'll resume again. All right, I'm going to take a couple shots of how tight this is. I wanted you guys kind of see I've got the second radiator hooked up. And you can see there's hardly any space back down here in this fitting coming out of the radiator going back into the pump. It comes out of the top radiator down to the other side of this back one on the back wall right here. The radiator right there. It goes in through that and comes out and it's going back into the pump. And I just wanted you to see how tight all this was. All right, so coming out of that back over here, over to here, and then in one side, down, coming down, going in, go through the radiator, coming back out this bottom port, and coming back up to the top of the pump. Now it's so tight in there, I had to get rid of this uh, the air the button that releases air pressure off the top of this. And I had just barely enough room for a small uh, 
barely enough room for a small plug to fit in there. So I can get water in it also. All right, there's a quick shot of how the card water block is gonna lay approximately. And there's the radion right above it. I'm just sizing out. And it's gotta connect to those pipes up there. So. Okay, let's take out that video card and put on this water block. There's my screwdriver. All right, this is 5700 XT Anniversary Edition. We're fixing the water cool. I've been looking at it and I think, what's wrong one? All right, it says take out my four back ones first. Let me uh, try to get this. This is kind of hard to see on this model. Where is the little clip? Yeah, there it has come out with it. Luckily, this one is not the first time and it pops out. So I'm going to pop it back in. Alright. So, find my jewelry. Jewelry screwdrivers. And you really don't need to pay super duper money for these things. Uh, I think maybe I paid six, seven bucks at Harbor Freight for these jeweler screwdrivers right here. Of all the sizes that you see in the other videos, whether they're charging 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 bucks for them. So this one I need a very small Phillips, not sure what size, but that looks like it. Let's just check. That is it. I kind of feel bad about doing this. This is the 50th anniversary edition. Oh, there it is right there. Get that off. Really need some needle nose about right now, but that got at hand. Okay, wire's loose. Gotta be almost there. Alright, we are gonna look at this for a minute. Before we go any further, a lot of people have questions about this, where to put the pads, <coughs> and I'm going to kind of point it out right now. So I'll walk around on this side, just going to look. So this is how it came apart, and this is how it's going to go back together. 
so this was they're laying the same way it would go back together like this or like this all right so this is it taken apart you can see the paste that was on it it looks like some type of graphite pad maybe I'm not sure from right there and Sure enough, I left my glasses over there. I'm gonna get a good look at this. Because um, I'm gonna point out on this thing right here, there's actually five locations one, two, three, four, five. And besides the memory and the VRM, the memory, VRM. So this one. It's got one, two, okay, one, two, okay, let's cover the big items first. Here's the memory, all the way around these big blocks. Here's the VRM, they were all covered, all, every one of these little chips, they're all getting a pad. However, they've got four of these five covered. One, two, three, four, and it looks like whatever was here is not, one, one, two, three, four. I'm looking here to see if I see any more. So do this one, this one, this one, this one, which is these two. And it's got two on the side over here, which would be this one. And I guess this one right here, let me snatch it up. It would be this one right here. And I'll have to look at that closer. I'm not seeing which chip to mount there but I'm going to match this one for sure there's one right here for this chip right here I'm not even seeing anything that this goes to Is it maybe that but it would be closer like over in this area let's get this back down it would be somewhere in this area right here and there ain't even anything there. However, this one's got one right here. So one, two, two. Instead of this one, I'll use this one. Two, two at the top. And, okay, one, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's one on the side. Four, four, and five, five. That's what I'm going to cover along with these items and these items. So you can see right there. And this is what a lot of people skip over when they're looking at stuff. If I was to fold this back over, these chips would be covered. One, two. This chip would be covered right here. This chip would be covered on this block right here. One, two, three. Three on the top, two on the side. One, two. And your top three is one, two, three. Of course, your big ones and your VRM. That's what we're going to cover. I hope that helps somebody because. I looked at a lot of videos and I couldn't find that. Okay, I'm just pulling off the rest of these thermal pads right now and fixing the paste the other ones. I decided I'm going to use the back of this plate to cut my new ones. Bixky gave me this nice little spatula spread. So as soon as I get these off, I'm going to clean that G2 
GPU off. Just putting the old pads back on this one, kind of where they came from. This one only had four, but this one's got five. So we're gonna get all these, these five pads and all these. All right, we're ready to start. As soon as I clean this guy off, I should go get some alcohol, but I think this is just graphite. A graphite pad. Alright, that's clean enough for the girls I go out with. So let's start cutting pads. Uh, these black ones I don't know anything about. I'm going to trust Bisky that uh, they know what they're doing. So these are double sided, they got to peel off the tape afterwards. And I'm just going to cut up, what is there, eight of those. All right, now I got my five little ones. And this one that's already partly cut up, I'm gonna use that. It's easy to put them on here since they'll go right straight to the spot. A little too big, but I got it. Alright, three more little pieces. Uh, these are a little bit bigger. Alright, got my five pads, got all these covered, and all my memory, VRM, all covered. And this is it. This should go right in there, 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 there. Okay, let's see what it says I need for screws here. Got a pair of screws out. We're going to put some thermal paste. I like this GD900. Um, a lot of people want to use thermal grizzle or something like that. This is made in China. I find it to be just as good. So, actually, as soon as I said that,
All right, now we're going to put some thermal paste. I like this GD900 thermal grease. Uh, I find it to be every good as any as the rest of the brands. Um, we've got a little spatula that came with this big ski, so we're going to grab it and try to spread it out and not get it everywhere else off the chip. but get it equal, but not off. So just take your time. All right, that looks like good coverage. Let me get this out of the way. We are ready to assemble. We got five pads here, uh, memory covered, VRMs covered, and here's the screws for this. And I'm gonna get back up before I do this. So that's my knees will get hurt. All right, so just start matching the holes. Take your time again. That way the pads don't get messed up. Just start lining up to the holes. And there we go. Screws lined up. Put it on top of this this time. Put in the 3950X now. So let's grab this box. Get her open. There is the 3950X chip right there. So let's cut the seal. 
It says cooler not included with third and I-50X, which I knew that. There's my chip. Pretty sure I don't need anything else. A rising sticker, rising line. There's 3950. We're gonna try to get it in this slide up here. We're not gonna try it, we're gonna do it. So let me go pop that open. Again, everyone knows to match the triangles in the corner to the triangle up here. And I'll put on my glasses for this one. I already know which direction it needs to go because I just took the other one out. Top right, our top left is the direction, and so let me, all right, got it in. I'm gonna lock it down. Uh, let's find my little spatula that I just used, and my GD900. And I'm going to go ahead and put the thermal paste on. And I'm going to spread that out before it turns off. I forgot to tell you this. Um, these things in the center of these, you can use an Allen wrench to tighten them up. So that's, <laughs> I forgot to tell you that. Um, and also, like this one right here, I'm having a problem getting it loose. So stick that in there. And sure enough, if I can get it loose right away. So with the Allen wrench, I should have told you that much earlier on. Okay, this one's too short, so I'm getting all my fittings back off these pipes and washers and everything else. And getting down to the last pieces, I did have another tube I thought that was the right length. So let me see where I laid that down at. Oh, here it is, right here. I think this one's perfect. So let's try it. Let's get our fitting on. And we're gonna get one of the small washers or small O-rings. And one of the slightly bigger ones. All right, we're gonna put this in there. Get past both O-rings inside. I'm not sure about that. There's 
one. All right, I'm gonna roll these O-rings down, tighten that on. Come back, tighten it all the way down in a second. I'm going to check this. I use one of these types, just like this elbow. So I'm gonna put my clamp, whatever you want to call it, get tarred and put my cap on and hit this. There's one, two, both my past both of them. Tighten this down, yeah. That's gonna be a perfect fit. Okay, I got the 3950X in there, and I also went ahead and added that uh, thermometer, red thermometer at the bottom right along next to the flow gauge. Everything's moved around, I'm ready to start adding some water, so let's get started on that. Alright, I'm going to kick on the pump, and then I'm going to have to fill it up again after put some in the two radiators that haven't even filled up yet. So I need to be ready to turn it off for one thing, get my finger over that hole. So as soon as I turn it on. All right, I'm gonna grab some more water, I'll be right back. So I just checked my temperatures. GPO temperature's good at 32 C's. Uh, the CPU is warm in that, but that's brand new 16 core 3950X. So I'll be back. I'm just gonna let it run for an hour or so and check for leaks and we'll see you in a bit. All right, I'm doing some handheld here. I just checked Hardware Info 64. My GPU is idling around 33C and the CPU 16 core 3950X is around 38C. So before I start going all back together, I thought I'd do a little video and hopefully get in. As you can see, I went with red dye. I am handheld, so it's a little shaky. So you can kind of see. Um, I've got to figure out why that light isn't coming in on the red thermometer Bixby. Um, I've got to check my wire connection, basically. So all the lights are off in the room. There's 12 of these ID cooling fans. I'll have a link to it. I can't remember the exact model. DF1025 or something. ARGB Trio. I didn't connect the water block on the ARGB on the water block yet because I need to add an <laughs> another port. Um, I've got two more ARGB controllers. 10 port controllers. I just didn't feel like hooking them up right now. Whenever I fix this uh, big e thermometer right here, I'll uh, also add in the ports. But it's all looking good. Temperatures are low. I'm 
very happy with that. And I don't know how well you can see these two pipes back here, but going one in the back goes to the bottom. Uh, it, where it's coming in out of the other radiator into the second radiator. The top radiator has um, three fans on it. This one on the side is push pull. So that means there's three more ARGB fans over here, which I haven't. I haven't put it all back together yet, but I just wanted to kind of show you what's going on here. Um, you can see the water's kind of settled down there. There's no more bubbles coming up or when the light comes back on, you'll be able to see it. I uh, have kind of have a slow rainbow going on here. And uh, that's it. Red dies for AMD. The red on that. Uh, CPU water block that's for AMD 3950X that's a Radeon uh, 5700 XT anniversary edition water cooled that's a big ski water block uh, the CPU water block is XSPC Raystorm so hopefully that gives you an idea Case, Lee and Lee Dynamic 411D. And uh, I'll come back and wrap it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to show some more uh, tests. I'm going to burn that video card with Furmark. And it hit that hot spot before there, but it was complaining about. Let's see what it does now. Okay, see in a bit. There's the big ski block with the RGB hooked up. It's called Unicorn Duke. That's my color. Uh, I'm just kidding, of course, but uh, uh, some people like to tell me that. That's what it looks like. There is the big ski inline temperature. So that's the system. I laid it on the side just so we could see this uh, uh, GP water block. It's on the RX 5700 XT Anniversary Edition. And the whole thing turned out pretty nice. There's the 3950X in there. Okay, I think I've showed this enough now. See the red dye I put in there. I can the lights change. You know, that's tight fit on the lean lead up dynamic. Everything's going back together. What we're looking at now are three different tests. Uh, Tech Power Ups GPU-Z, the ADM, uh, AMD Radeon Global Settings, which graphs and reports temperature, and also Hardware Info 64, HW Info 64. This is before the original AMD blower on the AMD Radeon 5700 XT Anniversary Edition and as you can see this is after a 15 minute test my hotspot temperatures went up to 105 C my GPU memory was sitting at around 92 C and this is when everybody else said we're making it up to 110 C uh, everybody started complaining about it for a while and AMD came out and said 
Well, this is normal, and it is normal on these blower style cards. However, after I installed the Bixky water block, my hotspot temperature went down to 69 degrees, which is plus or minus 35 C temperature drop, so that's great. So I went on to further run for Mark for one hour, and it only came up two more degrees to 71 C. And you can see my memory after an hour of Furmark running on the GPU full load. My memory temps only reach 78C. 35C plus or minus temperature drop with this big ski water block on two radiators with a 3950X CPU also being cooled, cooled by those same two radiators. So I think that's pretty awesome. Next we have um, Prime95 also running to stress test the C CPU, so this would be after 15 minutes, and Furmark also running in the background stressing the GPU. So CPU is setting at 575, it's up to 402 watts power, and GPU hotspot is at 70, uh, so and then after 30 minutes. My CPU 3950X reaches 91.5C, 484 watts. Uh, GPU memory is up to 80C, and the GPU hotspot, as hot as it's going to get, is now at 73C. And finally, uh, after a full hour test on CPU and GPU, my CPU 3950X is sitting at 895 and GPU hotspot 73 PSU power uh, at 460. So after I stopped all the tests, my normal power is around 160 to 180 watts, just sitting around idling. Normal CPU temperatures around 35C, normal GPU temperatures up and down around 45C for that uh, hotspot. So it's really very cool and I'm very happy with this system. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, hit that subscribe button. Go to my Twitter page. Go to my uh, website. Thanks.